What is up, everybody? Welcome to the DraftKings Picks and Prediction Show. We are here on Pub Sports Radio on a Wednesday, breaking down UFC Vegas 88. We got Ty Tuivasa going against Marcin Tybur. We have a 13-fight card. And yeah, I actually don't hate this card. I think from a matchmaking standpoint, they did a really good job. I think we're in for a, a lot of fun fights. Uh, maybe not the most name value, but I see a lot of violence on the card, which is always good. And yeah, this should be a really interesting card from a, a fan perspective, a betting perspective. And of course, a DraftKings perspective, which we'll be talking tonight. As you see on the screen, we are missing Gordo. Gordo will not be here next week, and he will not be here for the trash card um, next week as well. So we're here with me, Wheezy, and Monk. We'll kick it to you first, Wheezy. Wheezy, what is up? Are you looking forward to UFC Vegas 88? Yeah, I yeah, am, man. You know, I uh, already did the full card breakdown last night on my channel, and I'm ready to discuss the DraftKings implications of these fights, and there's some interesting matchups. We were just before the show started. We were looking ahead to next week, that 14-fight slate. And, yeah, in comparison, this one looks pretty good. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy for this card. There's a, you know, and this this Dolgarian versus Rodriguez fight is as relevant as a, of a fight as we're going to see over the next three weeks. So I'm really excited for that one. Dude, any week that we get to see Ovin St. Pru get seven shades of shit beaten out of him is a good week, in my opinion, you know? So, I mean, like, I'm going to have some fun. I'm ready. It'll be fun. It'll be fun for sure. We got Monk in the building. Monk, what is up? Are you looking forward to this card? Yeah, not too bad. I mean, we're going to have a little bit of uh, a little bit of a get right after uh, the, the good card last week. Uh, and this is what we have here. I mean, we got a couple of big boys in the main event. You know, we've got the Battle Lusa fight, Kennedy, St. Pru. Uh, a couple of decent fights on here. Uh, a couple, uh, you know, a super good rematch between Kiazan and uh, and uh, Panny Kianzad. Um, but for, for real, though, you know, some decent fights. A couple of newcomers. We'll see exactly where they're at after their Dana White contender series. And uh, yeah, if next week is looking a, a little rough, then I'm definitely going to enjoy this one. I'm going to run faster than chelsea chandler to get to my uh tv this week so there you go 100 percent. all right guys before we get into if you guys could please do us a favor leave a like on the video subscribe here to pub sports radio I do want to shout out the weekly pickems contest on pubsportsradio.com it is 100 free to enter pick your uh, fighter the round the method and a hundred dollars to first place week weekend and week out there all right i see elijah one in the building we got dixon in the building what is up what is up all right, uh, so as always, guys, we're going to start with our fight to target, and I will kick this one off because I'm just going to be going here with the main event. We got um, Tui Vasa. I don't even have the salaries pulled up. He, Tui Vasa is 8,300, right? Yes. While I while I pull up these salaries, it's such an it's such an amateur. So Tai Tui Vasa, 8,300, and then we got Marcin Tybura, 7,900. I feel like there's a path here for both guys. I feel like the path for Tai Tui Vasa is going to be a knockout win under one and a half rounds. Tai Tui Vasa has eight wins, seven of which come under one and a half rounds. Yeah, I mean, if he goes out there and gets the win, I kind of think it's going to be early. Whereas with the yeah, Marcin Tybura, kind of a slow starter. Um, but if this fight does get extended late second round, third, fourth, and fifth round, if it gets there, I think it heavily does favor him. Uh, obviously he has all the grappling upside as well. So I think whoever wins this fight scores really well, whether it's an early tie to Ivasa knockout win, or it's uh, Marcin Tybura dragging the fight down to the mat and eventually getting a TKO win in the third, fourth, or fifth round, maybe even winning decision as well. So yeah, great fight to target in the main event. Uh, love the salary prices for both guys. Wheezy, which fight are you targeting the heaviest for UFC Vegas 88? You know, I like the uh, Mike Davis versus Natan Levy fight from a numbers perspective here as Levy scores 4.28 DraftKings points per minute and Davis is scoring 4.6. So both of these guys wrestle. The fight doesn't go to decision. is priced at plus 145. So it finishes inside the distance over 40% of the time, but I don't really mind when both fighters go at a high pace if the fight finishes inside the distance or not because – the pace over 15, 15 minutes scores similar to a first round finish. Like, for instance, you know, with a guy like Davis, who's scoring 4.6 points per minute, even in a decision win, you're getting um, 99 points. And, you know, your average first round win in, in DraftKings is going to score you a little over 100. So, unless it, of course, it, it, it ends in the first 60 seconds. So, a guy like Davis, you know, is going to score almost as much in a decision win as your average first round winner. But there's also the chance for that finish for either of the high price fighters or the high pace fighters, I should say. So 
yeah, Davis versus Levy. Davis is one of the cheaper uh, options up top this week, and he scores a lot of points. And Levy is a guy who wrestles a lot too. So I could see this being an up and down, back and forth, high volume fight where somebody gets served late. And uh, I think that that's going to be a good one to target. All right. Uh, Monk, which fight are you heaviest on this week? Those two I had on my list for sure. Um, I'm going to go with actually the co-main event, Brian Battle and Angelusa. I know it's slated for like minus 180 to finish uh, or to not finish inside the distance, minus 190. But honestly, the way these guys score when they win is is very good. Battle, I mean, you kind of have to play him. He's kind of coming into his own a little bit. He's only dropped to Renat Fakhradinov in his last five, who's a very good prospect. Um, other than that, he's got two wins under a minute. So you want to play that guy, obviously, right? Yeah, one was against Gabe Green and one was against Sato. And I think Lusa is probably a lot more uh, stable than that overall. Uh, but then Fletcher, you know, he subbed Fletcher in, in the 10th minute. Still scored 103 points. Meanwhile, Lusa is scoring crazy amounts of points, but in a different way, not with finishes, but by going all three rounds and just, I mean, 8.6 strikes a minute in one fight, seven strikes a minute in the other fight, takedown after takedown, control time, racking up uh, non-significant strikes. That is how he gets it done uh, at distance. So I think no matter what happens, there is a chance that one of these guys uh, scores uh, optimally for their style. So I really like both sides. Hoping I'm, I'm kind of, you know, using this fight is like uh kind kind of risking a little bit more because like i said it is a minus 190 to go the distance but man if one of these guys can get can score what they usually score like at 86 and 7600 somebody has a chance to make the optimal here so maybe a little sleepy uh sleeper fight here but i i do like battle and lusa all right battle lusa co-main event Present saying we'll see you all at Pubba Palooza next week. We'll be flying in this time next Wednesday. Heck yeah. I'm not sure if I'm going to make it out just yet. Uh, Wheezy will be in Florida, right? So, yep. Yeah. Hopefully, if I if I don't go, hopefully you guys have fun. You guys are always going to have fun. I've been there before, and it's it's always a good time. So, shout out to Preston. Um, Preston's res- the main response for ending Francis and Gandhi's boxing career. Dang. Thought that was Anthony Joshua. <laughs> I think Preston might have called the uh, the knockout there, maybe. <laughs> All right, let's see here. We'll move on to the fight to fade. I will kick this one off. I'm gonna go with probably like the obvious one. It's it's Macy Chazon, Panic Kanzad. It's just a fight where I actually like Macy Chazon to win a, a decent bit as far as, as long as she goes out there and you know makes weight, looks good on the scale. But I kind of see this fight just playing out a little bit slow, slower paced, a uh, lot of cage pushing, like a lot of cage pushing. Maybe your occasional takedown. Maybe Macy can sub, but I don't really think so. I think this fight does go 50 minutes with a, mostly a controlled based decision with not a ton going on. So I like Macy to win. Honestly, decently confident in her to win, but in terms of scoring well, I just think on this car where we're going, going to get a lot of finishes, um, I think there's better options around. Monk, which fight are you fading for this week? Yeah, I only have two on my list, and I don't even really like the second one, so I'm I'm just going to you know repeat what you said, Kiesan and Kianzad, to be honest. Uh, uh, it, it, it's a rematch fight that nobody really needs to see. Kiesan probably you know takes it by decision. The only thing I'll say is Kianzad is like... Uh, DraftKings poison like she doesn't even score 70 points when she wins every single one of her fights goes to decision win or loss uh and really nobody wins when she fights because the the loser even you know she only gives up like 70 points per loss anyway so uh Kiesan does have a little bit more upside than I would usually like to see in a fight that I'm fading meaning that against Norma Dumont and uh who else was it Shanna Young well over 100 points well over triple digits in those fights but again Kianza just doesn't allow any points there's just nothing doing in those fights so i agree fading uh Kieson and uh Penny kian's out here and uh wheezy which fight are you fading uh you know i think a good one to fade for gpps this week is going to be in check versus kennedy or i mean on check versus Ovin st pru because both guys are low pace for DraftKings. uh kennedy's scoring about 2.8 DraftKings points per minute which is about average but Ovin's, i got a laughable 1.97 DraftKings mm-hmm. points per minute. And it's not like he's bet, had like three fights or something. This guy's got over 20 fights at the UFC level, and he puts up such a far below. It's like one and a half st- standard deviations below the mean. This guy, this guy is just terrible. So uh, Ovens is a dart throw at best. That's like if Kennedy blows out his knee going for a takedown. Maybe that's his win condition. 
And there's better value, frankly, than Kennedy in the upper tier. He's the most expensive fighter. So that kind of puts it on his head that it's like, man, if he doesn't have a spectacular performance, you know, uh, you could be left holding the bag, paying up for Kennedy this week, especially if there's not a lot of underdogs coming through. So, um, you know, Kennedy in cash is fine um, because he's going to beat Ovin St. Pru unless something bad happens. But um, for, for, for GPPs, it's not the worst fight to stay away from. Yeah, I actually don't mind that call at all because Kennedy is a slow starter. We talked about a little bit earlier. Like he doesn't have a win yet in the first round, but I mean, this could be that, that first, first round finish. Like if he's ever going to do it, it's going to be here, but you're right. Um, he does take a while to get going. And if he does finish OSP in the second or third round, it's extremely slow pace. Like he's probably going to score not that well. So I don't mind that call at all. All right. Moving on to the fight to fade. Weezy, we'll start with you. Which fighter are you fading for this week? Uh, the fighter I'm fading, of course, is Ovin St. Pru because I just talked about him and I just mentioned how absolutely horrible he is at DraftKings. This guy is straight up DraftKings AIDS. 26 fights, 1.97 DraftKings points per minute. Even when this guy gets finishes, you're disappointed because you're like, holy shit. He finished a fight in the second round and only scored 76 <laughs> points. Yeah, that's Ovin St. Pru. So, yeah, I mean, and and he, chances are he kind of gets drowned by the volume, the pressure. Everything that Kennedy does is, is just above average in terms of pace. And everything that Ovin's does is way below average in terms of pace. So I think, you know, the old man here at uh, almost 41 years old and Ovin St. Pru with 43 professional fights, 26 UFC fights, looks as shitty as he's looked recently and just winds up going out there and getting his ass shaved. Uh, Jack got Kennedy at minus 375. And by the way, Kennedy is now minus 700. I never thought I'd see Kennedy minus 700 against anybody in the UFC, but just goes to show you how terrible OSP has looked as of late. What is up, TH? Uh, for me, I'm going to be fading uh, Charlampos Gregorio. He's 8,900. And if we take a look at the line, there's actually a lot of money coming in on the Inheliger side. It looks like um, Gregorio is now only minus 158, and Chad Inheliger is plus 138. And I'm actually picking the dog outright in Inheliger. It's hard to be extremely confident in a 37 year old bantamweight, um, but. You know, I'm just not that impressed with Gregorio. I get it. He went out there and got a 60-second finish in his Contender Series fight. But, you know, prior to that, this guy can be low volume. I don't trust his cardio. And Helliger's a tough dude. He's never been knocked out in his entire career. He's going to have the cardio advantage as well. Seems very motivated for this fight as well. This is, uh, if he loses this fight, he's probably cut. So, yeah, I, I'm more so on the dog here and in Helliger. And as far as Gregorio, I'll just be fading him. I think people are going to look at the 60-second knockout and play him because of that. I'm not sure he knocks out and Hellinger is the first one to do it. So fading Gregorio, I think there's better options up top. Uh, Monk, which fighter are you fading this week? Yeah, I'll go with one of the a favorite fighter here. You know, not somebody that's super favorite, but uh, Josie Ann Nunez against Chelsea Chandler. Like, this fight's going to be terrible. But, uh, yeah, Josie looked, you know, great against someone that probably shouldn't even have been in the UFC, Bia Malecki. Uh, that's why she popped off in her very first fight, scoring 121 points, but she's gone, you know, tragically downhill, 95 points again, Pasquale couldn't even finish her. And then the Zara Farron fight, my God, that was, uh, that was rough to say the least. I mean, 200 strikes landed in that fight between the two of them, but man, she scored a whopping 75 points, uh, in that win there. So yeah, I'm just not looking forward to it. You know, super short, super long arms built very, uh, crazily for a women's, uh, bantamweight, formerly women's featherweight uh but yeah i just think chelsea chandler could you know suffocate or get inside and just like throw her to the ground and and hopefully uh just control time on top of that so i really don't think josie uh is gonna pay off that eighty four hundred dollar salary this week so i'm gonna go with the dog here and uh try to save some money yeah what a what a terrible fight yeah uh, we got steve in the building what is up steve okay guys we'll move on to our Favorite dog here. We'll start with you, Easy. Who's your favorite dog for this week? You know, I kind of like Angalusa this week. He is the uh, Bootsy Collins Memorial Dogs or Bark and Pick of the Week because I felt he was the best dog value at the price at plus 155 currently. And this guy's been scoring points too. It's not just a, I think he can win the fight. It's that he's averaging 4.78 DraftKings points per minute. The stylistic matchup dictates that there's a high possibility that he wrestles. 
against a guy in battle who has 45% takedown defense. The price is right at 7,600. And I think this one goes the distance because Lusa is very durable. And Lusa has a decent shot to win a decision here if he's successful implementing the wrestling. And if he does that at 7,600 and gets a win, it's going to be a great dog play for this week. Yep. Um, Angelus is one of my favorite dogs. I think Ty Burr, I'm going to have a lot of exposure to him. Another guy that I don't mind who is pretty cheap is going to be Danny Silva. He is um, only 7,400, but on the money line, looks like money's been coming in on him. He's now only like plus 145-ish, plus 150. And yeah, this is a guy in Danny Silva who, first off, I think this fight's going to be a lot of fun. I think this has fight of the night potential written all over it. But yeah, you just can't ignore the volume of Danny Silva. What he did on the Contender Series was crazy. Just marched forward the entire time, landed over 200 significant strikes here. I just feel like it's going to be a firefight here. I feel like it's going to be an absolute war. And I feel like if Danny Silva does pull off this upset, I could see a late finish here potentially as well. So, yeah, give me the volume of Danny Silva. But I'm with you, Easy. I think Luce is a solid dog. And then, of course, Ty Burr as well. Monk, who is your favorite dog for this week? Yes, uh, Luce was, is my number one uh, for sure. I'll just echo what you said a little bit in the previous round. Uh, where did he go? About uh, Chad and Helliger. I think that's a decent, uh, decent dog play here against a UFC debutante. Yeah, like you said, the 62nd. Uh, win is going to look really good on paper, 130 points if we would put scoring on it. Um, and El and Helliger hasn't looked great. I mean, he's one and two in the UFC, only beat Jesse Strader, uh, got subbed by Jose Johnson in his previous fight. But regardless, he spent 43, almost 44 minutes uh, inside of a UFC cage. And that's kind of what's important, especially when you're fighting, you know, a guy that barely even has uh, 10 pro fights as Gregorio does. So we're going to see. I'll, I'll take some chances here with uh, Ann Helliger at a very cheap salary. Like you said, I'm not confident whatsoever. Gregorio could come out here and just go off on him. But at the same time, if he's not indeed ready, 8,900 is going to look crazy for a newcomer, and 73 is going to look pretty good for the underdog in Chad. So, uh, yeah, give me uh, Ann Helliger as a decent dog this week. All right, yeah, I think there's a couple of decent dogs this week, and then Helliger – Although 37-year-old Bantamweight, he could be one of them, could potentially be one of them. Yeah. All right, let's move on to our prize picks section then. I'm going to kick us off. I'm going to go with a um, a time prop here. I'm going to go with the Jafel Filio less than 9.75 minutes fight time. You look at Ode Osborne and his career, um, a lot of his fights are finishing like in the very first round. Like I don't know the number off the top of my head, but it is a lot. Um, his fights typically do finish inside that first round, especially like outside the UFC, even, even inside the UFC, a lot of fights finish in the first round. Um, it just, this is going to be a war here. You know, I think Ode Osborne potentially has an upside of maybe knocking out Filio early, but you know, Filio gets this fight down to the mat. I think he styles on Osborne. Osborne's been submitted a handful of times. So yeah, I think this fight does end probably under one and a half rounds, uh, but they're giving us 9.75 minutes here. So I like the less, on the fight time there. I think somebody's getting served early on in this one. Uh, Monk, what do you like for prize picks this week? Yeah, I have a couple of striking props uh, written down. We did uh, sweep our prize picks last week. We uh, All four of them uh, we got correct, so that is always good to see. Um, I'm going to get a little more risky this week, and it's just because of OSP. I'm going to go with the under on Kennedy and Chuku. 25.5 significant strikes landed uh, he landed four against Jacoby. He lost that one. Landed 24 against Kutalaba and 20 against Roberson. Um, tons of finishes between these two guys, especially as of late. We all know St. Pru is probably not going to fight again. I mean, he hasn't said he's retiring. This isn't a Joanne Wood type situation, but uh, yeah, he can't be. I mean, he's going to be 41 in less than one month. So he can't be going to be, can't be expecting too many more fights out of him. So. Yeah, I'm thinking this is hope, hoping for a first round finish from Inchukwu, low volume but super powerful, and uh, we get it done under 25 and a half significant strikes. All right. I mean, I hope not. I have the the two three prop for uh, Kennedy, but like I said, this could be the the time that happens. Weezy, what do you like it from a prize picks perspective? The prize picks that I got um, was going to be the over for significant strikes for uh, Kennedy and Chekwu. Um, I've got 25 and a half here. Um, he's a guy, you know, like even Linz, when he beat the hell out of <laughs> Ovince, I think he landed more than 25 just in the flurry that he finished him with because like Ovince has got a brick for a head and he barely can move. Right. So like, that's why he's so easy to hit is because it takes just a, a tremendous effort for man, for this man to even climb stairs these days. 
So uh, I think that Kennedy, who's not like a one punch murderer, is power puncher, is going to take some time to work into the fight here. And um, I think I have my, uh, let me just look real quick here. Yes, my St. Pru uh, and Chek Wu. If I look at the significant strike template here for and Chek Wu, 25, he's, he's gotten over that number six of 10 times. And St. Pru is allowed over that number 11 of 21 times. So about 55% of the time, um, and check whose offense or St. Prue's defense is going over that number. And with uh, Uncle Wheezy's tits metric, they've got a 58% chance that we go over that number. So I, I like this one um, because, because we're thinking that Kennedy is the one that's going to win this fight because he's a minus 700 favorite. And because Kennedy's never finished a fight in the first round and he lands a, a lot of significant strikes per minute, um, I think that this is a very good over this week. 25 and a half significant strikes for Kennedy and check. Will. Well, I have a feeling uh, one of you two will, will probably no be right sweep on that. this week. No sweep this week. No, no, for sure. Maybe. I mean, I don't know, but we'll see. All right. Uh, let's see what we got. <laughs> Clint, Clint, you're on the wrong, wrong show, Michael. Shout out to Michael. <laughs> Shout out to Mikey. We got Michael Mikey in the building. What is up? All right. Um, let's move on now to our favorite GPP play. And this is kind of somebody I, I already talked about a little bit. It's Jafel Filio, 8,700. I just don't trust Ode Osborne at all. You know, I don't trust the cardio at all. I don't trust the durability. This is a guy in Ode Osborne who is like entering like Matt Schnell territory. Like this guy is getting finished like it's his job. Five finish losses two by knockout, three by sub. I just have a feeling that, you know, Filio is going to be much, much better on the mat, especially if it gets to the second or the third round. I think he can get takedowns here, and I think he goes out there and uh, gets a finish win against Osborne. So um, I think Osborne is dangerous, though. Like, in the first round, Osborne does have a lot of power. We've seen Filio hurt, but I think Filio has a lot more ways to win this fight. So 8,700, I like it. I think he finishes, and I think he puts up a big score here. Monk, who's your favorite GBP play for this week? I'm going to go with the main event guy, Tai Tuivasa. I mean, $8,300 is what we get for uh, a guy with huge finishing upside. Scoring, you know, not not break, you know, blowing the doors off the place with his scores, you know, 99, 95 against Sakai and Lewis. Uh, he has dropped three straight. Meanwhile, Ty Burra, I mean, are we really uh, going to go against a guy that has, or are we not going to go against a guy that, that has this haircut? Have you seen the, the pictures of, I figured Brady would have it pulled up already and uh, on his phone, but. My God, it looks like uh, looks like uh, Gary Oldman from from that sci fi movie with the chick with the orange hair. Yeah, yeah but the, he, he the fifth element, have, right? Yeah, fifth. He just doesn't have the plastic part on. Yeah, so that's what it looks like there. It looks like I don't even know. Somebody just pranked him and went right across his head, and he just dealt with it. So <laughs> yeah, hold on, uh, I can fix this. Yeah, you know? yeah exactly. <laughs> Not much else I need to say. I'm going with Tai Tuivasa. Uh, 8,300 for the hopeful uh, early finish, pay off that salary. Yeah, you made a good point. Uh, when I saw that haircut, I bet Tai Tui Vasa round one and round two knockout. You know, yeah. nobody with a haircut like that, like that is winning a fight. Uh, Wheezy, what do you like for a GPP play? GPP play this week is going to be your Uncle Wheezy's ass shaving of the week, one Mike Davis. Um, Natan is not great defensively, and I don't know where Natan is better at MMA than, than Mike Davis. Both guys have traditionally fought at a high pace, so it should be a high-scoring fight. And Davis' money line is blowing out towards minus 500 as we speak. Uh, so the price is right at 9,200. I think Mike wins impressively, and I think he scores well here. Yeah, I like him too. Um, for me, actually... I think that's it. I think we we're all covered here. Moving on to the cat. Wait, I'm so confused. Was that GPP Wheezy? Yeah, I had that as GPP. Yes. Okay. Okay. So moving on to the cash play. I'll kick us off here. I'm going with Kennedy and Zuchuku. Wheezy alluded to it. You know, maybe um, a solid fade in, in tournaments potentially, but for a cash play, I mean, I think Kennedy's about as, as safe as it gets. He's going against a, you know, wash is is kind of giving OSP too much credit. I think he's more than washed. I mean, he's just been checked out like the last three, four years. He's looked terrible. He's now 40, almost 41. It just really, I really struggle to see how, you know, OSP wins this fight. Kennedy's now approaching minus 700, which is it crazy? Potentially, but, you know, 
Um, I don't like OSP chances in this fight. I think Kennedy wins. I think he scores decent. I think he finishes OSP. He's like minus 300 just about to finish this fight as well. So, yeah, give me Kennedy. I think he's safe and has to finish upside to go along with it. Monk, who is your cash play for this week? Yeah, we're going <clears> to <throat> – excuse me. We're going to go with Mike Davis here, uh, the guy Wheezy just touched on. I mean, 9,200, yeah, it's third most expensive on the card. But, my God, uh, when the guy gets his game going, he is on it. Not only is he uh, – a wrestle heavy fighter it seems like with 14 takedowns in his past three wins but he's also he's not just a guy that's you know 20 strikes when he's landing all these he's landing 140 strikes 108 strikes against mason jones even 65 outlanding uh slava claws plus nine takedowns plus 54 percent control time while giving up next to no points on the ground on his way to 122 Weezy said Natan Levy has questionable defense. I would tend to agree. His only two wins are against Valdez and Breeden. Um, and he got taken down seven times by Rafa. Don't call me Rafa Garcia. So, yeah, I'm loving Mike Davis at 9,200. Love him for cash uh, overall this week. And, yeah, I'm hoping people are just like Mike Davis. I've never heard of that guy, and they just don't play him. But I'm sure that won't be the case. But, yeah, I'm looking to get way over on Mike Davis this week. And uh, Weezy, cash play for this week. I mean, if you're going to go with a cash play, it might as well be somebody that's been money, and it's Isaac Delgarian, you guys. I mean, 6.65 DraftKings points per minute in his debut, finished with 121.94 points. We know Isaac wrestles, and he has an elite wrestling background, so leaving him out of your lineup at only 8,500, it's going to be a massive risk against a guy in C-Rod that we've seen taken down multiple times by Pearson Rosas. And yes, we don't know what Delgarian striking looks like at all. We don't know what he looks like after round one, but this guy trains, you know, at Factory X Muay Thai in Unglewood, Colorado, up at, you know, um, elevation. He supposedly runs a lot and, and has got phenomenal endurance. So while there is the chance for an adrenaline dump because he's never seen a second round in his career, what's also possible is that this guy can wrestle for the full 15 and that he just absolutely drowns Christian Rodriguez in this spot. So I think that, you know, while I'm not willing to lay the juice on Dolgarian here with those unknowns on the betting line, I feel like leaving him out of a DraftKings lineup is a massive risk that I'm not willing to take for DFS. So I got to have Isaac in my lineup. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, money's been pouring in on him throughout the week. It's like minus 190 now. It opened up minus 125. All right, uh, moving on to our favorite value play. And I'll kick this one off easy. It's it's uh, it's Isaac Dolgarian for me as well. This is potential value. You know, I'm still not 110% sold on Isaac Dolgarian, but like you said, if, if he does indeed have three-round cardio, I'm not sure who's going to be able to stop this guy. I mean, the wrestling's incredible. The vicious ground and pound. Um, you know, we have Christian Rodriguez coming up a weight class here. Uh, I think Dolgarian has potential to maybe win this fight in the first round, but if it gets to the second to the third and he does end up having cardio, which we don't know if he does, you know, in hindsight, this guy could look like value. On top of that, money's been pouring in on him. He's almost a minus 200 favorite, and he's only 8,500. So potential value play here with Isaac Dol Dolgarian, just with the way this guy fights, the way this guy finishes, he's only 8,500, um, could look in hindsight a ton of value. Monk, who's your favorite value play for this week? Yeah, it's absolutely Isaac Dolgari in the Midwest chop at $8,500. He's the fourth uh, cheapest favorite on the entire card. And we just don't know what the non-weight uh, non bully Christian Rodriguez is going to look like. I'm looking back at mine, three of his last, all three of his last fights, someone has missed weight. He's been the reason of two of them. Josh Weems missed before that. And he has one UFC fight at featherweight in which he lost to good competition, but still a loss against Jonathan Pierce. Uh, a guy with, you know, in my head when I think of Jonathan Pierce, JSP, heavy, heavy wrestling game. And that's exactly what we're probably going to see from Isaac Dolgarian here. So it seems like Rodriguez is forced back up to 145 because he cannot seem to make weight. And uh, yeah, I'm going, I, I just like the salary here. If he was 9K or or something a little bit higher then I might think twice, but 8,500, yeah, I'm definitely going to uh, slot Dolgarian into my lineups this week. All right, and Wheezy, favorite value play? 
So for me, it's going to be Corey McKenna this week. Uh, I feel like she's the better wrestler than Jacqueline Amarim, and she should be able to win the minutes and rack up control time against Amarim, who's a BJJ player and who's willing to lose minutes off her back hunting for submissions. Corey has been scoring 3.8 DraftKings points per minute. This fight is favored to go the distance. So if Corey can win the minutes with her wrestling, and, and I don't think there's really any evidence to suggest that Jacqueline is going to be the better wrestler here. I think Corey has proven that her wrestling is UFC level thus far, while we saw uh, Jacqueline unable to even get a takedown against Sam Hughes after round one, and she struggled for the one that she did get. So um, I, I do think that if Corey can win the minutes with her wrestling and then win a decision that she easily covers her salary here at uh, a very mid price at 8000 all right. It makes sense to me. We haven't really talked about I'm that. I'm sorry, 8,200. 8,200. My bad. It's, it's Jacqueline that's 8,000. Yeah. Yep. Makes sense. We wouldn't really talk about that fight, but I think that fight's a pretty interesting fight to target from a, a DraftKings perspective. Okay. So next we have the dart throw. A couple interesting spots sticking out. We'll start with you, Monk. A dart throw for this week. Yeah, there are a couple of decent ones. Um, uh, screw it. I'll go with uh, Brian Barbarena. Why not? 7,100. This guy's an animal. Uh, generally, things are not going well for him, especially lately. His, uh, you know, toughness is one of his uh, strong suits, and that's not going to win you a ton of fights in a row. Uh, just just your toughness with, with lack of other skills. Um, I mean, he did not look good. He got taken down uh, 45 times against uh, Muradov. I mean, subbed in the first by Gunnar Nelson, who couldn't even sub Takashi Sato with 85 minutes of back control time. Uh, subbed by RDA before that. Not looking good for him lately, but Mearshart, you know, while he does have his moments, he kind of relies on getting, not relies, but he tends to get beat up a lot first and then land that round three, you know, sub. Somebody makes a mistake late in the round and boom, they get, they get the sub put on him. Um, I'm going to see, you know, at 7,100, that's worth a shot for for me thinking that Mearshard just gets everything right and then just doesn't land the sub. Maybe Barbarena, you know, goes caveman on him and just just is able to knock him down and the, the, the ref comes in and stops the fight a little early, something like that. So give me the dart throw on Barbarena. I think Mearshard does have this, uh, should be able to win this, but at 7,100, I mean, I'll take Bam Bam with a shot to uh, knock out the guy that's been knocked out four times in the UFC once or in his career once in his past five fights. So give me Barbarena. Yeah, I wrote, I wrote him down as well. I'm going to give a different one though. I'm going to give uh Mitch Ramirez uh 6,900 just due to the fact that, you know, Moises kind of iffy, man. I mean, this is a guy in Moises who's been finished a lot. He has like, there's some performances with Moises where he looks like incredible and there's also performances where it's like, how the heck is this guy in the UFC? So could be a situation where Mitch, uh, where Mitch Ramirez does go out there, maybe land a big shot early and gets him out of there. Um, but I, I think Moises probably does sub him, but we've seen Moises just go out there and just completely fold several times to, to not at least mention Ramirez as a dart throw. Uh, Wheezy, who's your dart throw for this week? For me, it's actually Barbarena. I mean, I never thought GM3 was the kind of guy you should lay heavy juice on. His sub prop is plus 110, so obviously the books think he gets a sub at a high clip, but he's not the most aggressive wrestler. And if he doesn't wrestle much, Brian's a high-volume guy who can rack up points in a loss. He's not a bad punt this week. He scores 35.4 points per loss, but he does score over 100 points per win. He will be low-owned, and GM3 is not a guy who goes out there and gets first-round submissions against anybody. So uh, Brian feels like a good punt this week that will be low-owned, have some upside, and could potentially put some volume on this guy because, like I say, man, Gerald just kind of fights at a snail's pace. He throws big shots one at a time, and he's not a chain wrestler by any stretch of the imagination. So if he doesn't get Brian down early and often, you know, Brian's going to score some points. Yeah, it looks like we all three wrote uh, Barbarina down, which is interesting. All right, uh, so what we'll do now is we're going to go through our results from last week. If you guys have any questions in the chat, uh, be sure to type them in. I have a, a couple starred, I believe, and then we'll get to those in a little bit. But last week we had UFC 299, incredible card. In fourth place was Wheezy. He had Rebellus to Spain 127, Sean O'Malley 122, Benoit Saint-Denis 47, 
Uh, Jalton Almeida, 55. Mikel Olszechuk, 0. Oh. And Cedric oh. Bernard, 19. Weezy scored a 373.13. In third place was Monk Gamrot, 131. Marina Moreau, 67. Benoit St. Denis, 47. Jalton, uh, 55. Michael Page, 52. Marlon Vera, 35. Monk scored 390.10. Second place was Gordo, Asu Amabayev, 117, O'Malley, 122, Kudalaba, 33, Jalton Almeida, 55, Gilbert Burns, 55, and then Poirier, 92, scoring 477. And then four points ahead of Gordo, I had uh, Asu Amabayev, 117, to Spain, 127, Benoit St. Denis, 47, Jalton, 55, Joanne Wood, 97, and then Marlon Vera, 35. I scored 481.54. So solid week there. Um, and then in terms of the total uh, scores overall, we are now eight cards in. And fourth is Monk with 2,978. Third is Wheezy with 3,179. Second is Gorda with 3,000. 3,377, 3, and then first is myself with 3,468. Gordo's 91 points behind. Wheezy is 289 behind, and Monk is 490 behind. All right, uh, lineups for this week. Do you have your lineup ready, Wheezy? I do, yeah. We're going to go uh, Kennedy and Chek Wu on top. Uh, Uncle Wheezy's ass shaving of the week, Mike Davis at 9,200. Isaac, the Midwest Choppa, Dolgarian. Uh, Corey McKenna, who I have forgiven, um, Angelusa at seventy six hundred, and Brian Barbarena is the punt at seventy one hundred. All right, Monk, what do you got for this week? Four of the same. I've got Nchukwu, Mike Davis, Isaac Dolgarian. I've also got Angelusa. I've got Tai Tuivasa, and punting with the only guy I can at that point after these five is Mitch Ramirez. I think we might have four of the same as well. I have uh, Kennedy, Dolgarian. Actually, no, I don't think we do. So Kennedy, Dolgarian. I have Filio. I have Angelusa. I have Silva. And then I have two Evasa. So I guess we do have four of the same, I think. So there we go. Those are the lineups for this week. And let's get to some questions. And we'll do our quick picks. How long do we think OSB lasts? I'm hoping it's at least five minutes. I sprinkled Kennedy round two at plus 420 and then Kennedy round three at like plus 750. But if he if he does finish OSP in a round, I won't be completely shocked. But I'll say he lasts. I'll say he lasts about six, seven minutes. So Weezy, how long do you think OSP lasts? Yeah, I think that long too. But, you know, the one thing I've noticed about Kennedy lately is that he's just been pressuring a lot. And he used to kind of just stand in front of people with his hands up and he would just throw that straight. But now it looks like he's really kind of coming after his opponent. You can really see that in the Jacoby fight. And if he kind of fights like that against um, Ovince, I think he might be able to get him out of there in the first round. There are some bets I like this week. Uh, Kennedy round two fight to start round two is something that the analytics really like. But boy, I mean, I feel like that'll be a butthole clencher for those it first will. five minutes the way i mean like because i mean if ovens had shown any spark any sign of life whatsoever i mean this guy looks so disinterested i i compared him to that one guy that was that was the meme last week that kind of like walked out like he was sleepwalking and then he actually got kicked in the head and knocked <laughs> out in like less than 10 seconds that guy makes ovens you know look slow you know, the way Holvins has been fighting is just so bad, man. So, uh, no thanks. Uh, Bunk, what can you tell me about the high AK salaries? I keep playing them, and it seems like they keep disappointing. I know it varies week to week, but any trends with those salaries? Yeah, it was weird last week. Three 9Ks, three 7Ks, none in the 8K range. Uh, 89 was on it the week before. Nobody the week before that. Yeah, it's been a little bit lower. Uh, Anthony, Anthony Hernandez made it at UFC 298 at 8,800 most expensive fighter to make it. But, uh, yeah, I haven't really been tracking those as much as I'm trying to get my new data in, but, uh, yeah, it is interesting. I thought it was, I was very surprised last week when uh losing fighter made it and, uh, nobody in the 8k range made it. So it is, it is pretty interesting. It is, it is any fights to end in split decision. Uh, I yeah. can see Amareem McKenna ending in a split decision. 
I could see cool about Silva if it goes to decision ending in a split. I don't think anybody's going to know who the fuck won Nunez Chandler if that goes. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Maybe the judges won't even be awake uh, if they do go that long. Um, Not much. Yeah, yeah, maybe even battle Lusa. I think that's going to be a close fight. You know, and depending on how uh, Lusa's takedowns get scored, who does the better work at distance, that could be an interesting one as well. I don't think Tui Vasa Tabura goes to split. <laughs> if that hits round four, I'm gonna be fucking shocked. Yeah, I was just kind of yeah, I was thinking too. maybe the, the Nunez Chandler fight, because like you said, Weezy, maybe the judges just fall asleep during it. Um, no problem, Dixon. All right, guys, we're gonna do our quick picks and we're gonna head out of here. Quicker show, uh, because we don't have Gordo, but we'll start with you, Weezy. Do you have your quick picks for UFC Vegas 88? Yes, sir. Um, we're gonna go with uh from from the main event down to the bottom here, we're going to go to Ivasa KO round two. Angalusa is the Bootsy Collins Memorial Dogs or Barking Pick of the Week, picking him to win by decision. Kennedy and Chekwu to shave the ass of uh, Ovin St. Prue and hopefully retire him for the good of the sport <laughs> and for the good of the fans who watch this sport. Uh, we're picking in Chekwu by second round KO. Um, I'm picking Christian Rodriguez for the upset just because of the unknowns on the Dolgarian side. Uh, Rodriguez submission round two is the pick. Uh, Macy Chase on by decision. Uh, the auto bet, as always, Gerald Mearshart submission round three. Uh, Mike Davis, uh, to win, um, by decision. Um, Chelsea Chandler to win by decision. Andre Filio to win by second round submission. Uh, Tiago Moises first round submission. Uh, Josh Kulabau second round knockout. Jacqueline Amarim to win by decision and Chad and Halliger uh, third round KO. All right. Yeah, I think we're pretty similar. I'm going to Ivasa KO one. Angelusa decision. Kennedy and Tachuku KO one. Dolgarian KO one. Chiazon decision. Mearshart submission round two. Rear naked choke. Davis KO round three. Nunez decision. Filio submission round two. Head and arm choke. Uh, Moises submission round two, rear naked choke. Uh, Silva KO round three, McKenna decision, and then Chad and Hellinger KO three. Monk, quick picks for this week. I've got Tai Tuivasa KO one, Lusa decision, Chuku KO one, Dolgarian KO two, Kieson decision, Mearshart sub three, rear naked choke, uh, Davis decision, Chandler decision. I hope it's not Andre Filio uh, in this fight, but Filio decision, uh, Moises sub two, <laughs> rear naked. <laughs> uh, Cooley Bow decision, Amarim decision, and Gregorio, uh, round three KO. And then, last question, uh, Tuivasa retirement fight. I don't think so. I haven't heard anything, but this is since he's fighting. I mean, the best laugh that's ever been recorded is is the clip of him on the phone where he's, you know, yeah. what I'm talking about. That's yeah, the greatest video. The tie to Ivasa, you got to watch it. It is. Got to watch. I mean, it. he's only 31. I mean, at yeah. heavyweight, that's like super that's like a baby, super young. So he's got like 10 years left, probably. Yeah, if the is prime at 38. Yeah, he has. He yeah. has nine, 10 years left for sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, not in his prime, though. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we did it, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. And to kick it around, Weezy, any any extra plans for some content for this week? Yeah, I'm going to Florida tomorrow morning to go visit my dad. But I'm going to do Ask Weezy before we head out the door here. Uh, so I've got some templates kind of set up. I'm ready to answer your questions. If you have underdog questions, prize picks questions, time prop betting questions, KO sub decision prop questions. I got everything set up. I'm ready to answer your questions. I'm ready to make the data that I collect and curate benefit you for free on YouTube, 10 o'clock central time, Uncle Wheezy's YouTube channel. Be there. Let's stack cash tickets like flapjacks for UFC Vegas 88 and bathe in the blood of our vanquished DraftKings enemies. Let's go. Be there or be square. Coming up an hour and 12 minutes. Monk, what are your plans for some content for the rest of the week? Love it. Yeah. Uh, well, I hope Weezy has a great trip to Florida. Um, I You can find me tomorrow, Monk and Lou's Happy Hour, of course, Midnight Eastern, right there on the MMA Engine channel. Uh, we're going to be going through all these fights. 
Um, Lou will probably uh, give a bunch of soccer plays as well at the end. He's been killing it lately um, with his part. I mean, just going nuts. We've got Danish handball. We're all kinds of stuff you can make money on. But seriously, we mostly focus on the betting lines and the DraftKings angles for UFC Vegas 88. So join us. Uh, check it out. Should be a good time. There we go. Go check them out. And, uh, yeah, you guys can check me out, DFS by the numbers, going live Friday for some final thoughts, and then Saturday for best bet. Best of luck for UFC Vegas 88 to Ivasa Tybura, and we'll talk to you all very soon. See you later.